Good afternoon. With the end of the Christmas season, we begin our journey through the ordinary time of the church year. The gospel begins with looking and gazing and responding to the call of discipleship. Jesus asks the two disciples, what are you looking for? And they respond by asking, where are you staying? <clears throat> Jesus answers with the invitation, come and you will see. He speaks that same invitation to us today. All discipleship is an active and involving relationship with Jesus, a following, seeking, staying, finding, and dialoguing with Jesus. He invites us today to come and see. Will we respond as the psalmist does today? Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Tonight we are remembering and praying for Vera Winning, and tomorrow we pray for Martha Mormon. Our sanctuary light burns this week in memory of Maurice Mitzler. <clears throat> Another blood drive is set for February the 16th. There's more information in this week's bulletin as well as um, all other announcements. Please rise. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all safely live, a place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive, built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace, hear the love of Christ shall end divisions, all Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us always. With your spirit. We come now to ordinary time. Indeed, Jesus has come into the world and what that coming means in our ordinary, everyday lives. As we open our prayer once again in ordinary time this year, let us invite the learning of Christ to guide our lives. Lord Jesus, you came to reveal the way to our Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to show one another this way. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, come fill us with your life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the heart. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty, 
Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty ever-living God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the prayers of your people and bestow your peace upon everyone in our times. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus, who lives one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me? But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am. You called me? Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Then Samuel went to sleep in his place. The Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry, and he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Here am I, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or offering you wished not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocaust or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. Here am I, Lord. I come to do your will. 
In the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O oh Lord, know. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. who brings us truth and grace. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John the Baptist was standing with two of his disciples and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what John said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? Jesus said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Now Simon, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. Andrew first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated as the Christ. Then Andrew brought him to see Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated as Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Where are you staying? 
come and see. These words are from our gospel this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sure at some time or another, something occurred that our observation was, now just where is that person coming from? Well, and then maybe we, after we interact a little bit, we say, well now, where am I going to go from here with this person? Well, so it is with Jesus. When Jesus, when they were searching for something, hopefully something better in this world, that was going to be the same observation they would make about Jesus. Where are you coming from? Where are you at? And then what does this mean for me? Where I am going in this life? Yes, today John the Baptist recognizes Jesus as the Lamb of God. The one sent from God that everybody was waiting for. But it's interesting that before John does all this, earlier on in the Gospel, John had just heard that Jesus was going around teaching. And so he was interested whether or not Jesus was this special person that everybody is waiting for. So he sent two of his messengers with a question for Jesus. Are you the one we're looking for? Or should we just go look for someone else? And Jesus' observation was, go back and tell John what you see and what you hear I'm saying. Go back and tell him that, and he will know. Well, hopefully that's what people are going to say about us, too. Yeah, go to that person and go look what they're doing. Go look what they're saying. Go look at how things are different for the better because I'm here. And that's what Jesus was doing as he, called, as he was calling his followers. Yes, they were so interested in Jesus that they're going to stick around and see what he was saying, what he was doing and see if that somehow fits in my life and what I'm here in this world to be doing. And so it is that these followers that came from John the Baptist to Jesus, and now, what? Well, one of the followers, Andrew, who is a brother of Peter, or Simon, that was his original name. You know, it's interesting that Often when Jesus had followers, he would rename them. Maybe that's kind of a reminder of our baptism name. Most of us, it's our middle name. We are renamed. Things are going to be different. We're going to be a different kind of person with a, like a whole new name. Well, when we follow Jesus indeed, we are going to listen to him, what he has to say. This is ordinary time now. Are we listening to Jesus every day, or do we make some time for him? Do we miss, perhaps, what he is saying? because there's so many other things going on in our world, monopolizing all my time, and, and this is important, and that's important, and this is upsetting me, and that's upsetting me, and then on and on and on and on. Just no peace, no time to hear maybe just a voice and kind of that all that's going on. Just like Samuel. The Samuel is just a well, teenager, maybe even a little younger. He was in the temple. He was in the temple learning about God. Well, we are in this world, hopefully, to learn about 
where we have come from. We have come from God. That's where we're coming from. And where are we going? We are going back to God from which we came. And everything in between, hopefully, we're going to be guided by God himself and the very teachings of Jesus. And so Andrew runs and tells his brother Simon, hey, you better come over here and take a look at this guy. You know, it's kind of interesting that the word of Jesus first spreads among relatives in a family. Is that where we're first going to be called to make this world something better? Following Jesus' commandments to love God and to love each other. And from there, hopefully, it goes beyond for all the rest of the sons and daughters who are on their way somewhere. And hopefully, that somewhere we can show them in all the good that we do that God has created us to bring. Where are we at anyway? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us now stand as once again we profess our beliefs. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Again, we bring our needs to our Father in heaven. For the church that we may introduce others to Christ through virtuous lives, loving deeds, and truthful words, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of the human family, for the safety and well-being of all political leaders, and for a peaceful inauguration, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater appreciation of the gift of human life within all hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students as they begin a new semester, that they be dedicated to their studies, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a successful vaccination program, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that God will heal the sick, guide those seeking employment, protect the homeless, and comfort the grieving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, particularly Vera Wenning and Martha Mormon, and all who have died from the virus, may God welcome them into eternal joy and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we know you always hear us. May we always hear you for in every moment of our lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be 
Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all this holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we all may participate worthily in these holy mysteries of your love. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our world, of our redemption, is accomplished. But we ask this through Christ the Lord, who lives one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do for us in this world. For though the human race may be divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that you can change our hearts. Even more by your Spirit, you can move our human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it can come, up, it can come about, O oh Lord, that hatred may be overcome by love. Revenge can give way to forgiveness, and discord may be changed to mutual respect for each other. Therefore, as we give you our unending thanks, we are joining even angels in heaven as we again praise you in singing. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, for Jesus has come in your name. Jesus is the word that has come to bring salvation, a hand that you extend to sinners, a way by which your peace is offered to our world. When we ourselves had turned away from you, you brought us all back to you, O Lord, so that in following your words in the way of Jesus, we might love each other. And now, celebrating this reconciliation Christ has come to bring us, we ask that you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body, the blood of Jesus Christ. We went about to give his life to set us free. As he reclined at supper, Jesus took bread into his hands. He gave you thanks. He said a blessing, breaking the bread, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his hands. He then confessed your unending mercy for all of us. Then he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating once again this memorial of the death and resurrection of Jesus, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you, Father in heaven, where you have given to us a sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask that you accept us also together with Jesus and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his spirit. For it is a spirit that takes away everything that separates us from each other. May make your church this sign of unity and inst an instrument of peace among all people. And may keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, and all of your people. For just as you have gathered us now at this table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her loving spouse, with your blessed apostles and all of the saints, especially Saint Maurice and Saint John the Baptist, along with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us all to share this unending banquet of unity in a new heaven, a new earth, where the fullness of your peace ever shines forth, surrounded by the light of Christ himself. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Indeed, as we learn more about our Father in heaven, let us pray to him as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming again of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of all in your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. May we always be coming from peace as we share this with each other. Maybe a little sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
again, I wish you a very pleasant evening and hopefully this week coming up that indeed the, the voice of the Lord may be working in your lives to call you and many around you to the kingdom of heaven itself. Let us now stand and pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make all you have fed with this heavenly sacrament one in mind and in heart. For we ask this through Christ the Lord, who lives one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God will not.